رئاسية خلال هذه التسعة أشهر هناك تحديات كبيرة تواجه باكستان اقتصاديا وسياسيا داخليا وخارجيا أهلا وسهلا بك أهلا وسهلا أشكر لكم هذه الفرصة يعني هناك علاقة استراتيجية مع المملكة العربية السعودية التي اخترت كأول وجهة لزيارتك الرسمية بعد تعيينك في مجلس الوزراء كيف وفي أي إطار تضع العلاقة مع المملكة التي وقفت إلى جانب باكستان منذ زمن؟ سعودي أريبيا is is most definitely a very friendly and a brotherly country like I said about UAE with Saudi Arabia Pakistan has uh, brotherly relations uh, not only when Pakistan came to being but from centuries mm -hmm. and with for, from centuries with this UAE also because uh, uh, before Pakistan came to being and carved out of India mm -hmm. Muslims millions were living there in the subcontinent no. they had uh, these brotherly relations they would uh, visit uh, these places through sea and then camels and go and visit uh, Makkah Mukarma and Medina Manavara. So this relationship between our brotherly countries. So we are talking these about are, strategic these are unique. relationship. These are unique. This visit today to the United Emirates of Arabia Saudi Arabia. In what way do you place this visit and relationship with the United Emirates of the United Arab I would uh, say without any fear of contradiction that this has been uh, one of the most uh, uh, successful trips mm -hmm. we have uh, undertaken to this uh, great uh, brotherly country of ours, mm -hmm. uh, UAE, which is uh, uh, my second home and second home for millions of Pakistanis. Mm -hmm. And I'm very grateful to the leadership of uh, UAE, particularly my brother, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, mm -hmm. uh, who is uh, very very affectionate brother and a great supporter of Pakistan and has been uh, 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 mm -hmm. he wants uh, he wants Pakistan to progress the people of Pakistan to become <coughs> happy and prosperous mm -hmm. and in that uh, uh, he has been extremely Sheikh Zayed Allah grant him place in Jannah was a great friend of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. He was uh, Pakistan was in his soul. لي باكستان أهمية جيوسياسية وجيوستراتيجية مهمة بالنسبة لدول المنطقة وأيضا لدول المنطقة أهمية اقتصادية سياسية وبعد ديني وعمق ثقافي لباكستان يعني استنادا على هاتين الأهميتين كيف يمكن أن تصف العلاقة مع دول المنطقة وكيف يمكن أن تتطور هذه العلاقات في الفترة المقبلة I think, uh, uh, Islamic uh, world and particularly Gulf which is uh, uh, neighboring uh, state to Pakistan we have these relations which are based on mutual trust mm -hmm. based on mutual respect our religion one religion our culture and our uh, historic connections mm -hmm. on that basis I think uh, Pakistan and uh, leadership from Gulf countries have uh, one resolve in mind and that is to cooperate with each other in the realm of uh, trade, investment, culture, promote uh, uh, Islam as uh, uh, a religion which uh, uh, you know projects peace, tranquility, yes, <coughs> shuns all kind of and all shapes of terrorism and extremism this and other points make a wonderful bouquet of uh, of agendas on which we have to work together and we are yeah and in that i think we are also strategic partners yeah. so do you count on the economical support of these countries to pakistan today hugely mm -hmm. without any ray of doubt yani la budda بدون شك يعني باكستان's economic woes and difficulties in the recent years won't have decreased without 
the support and tangible and very valuable support from our brotherly countries in the Gulf. Mm -hmm. Ap that goes without saying, uh, be it Saudi Arabia, no. be it uh, UAE and other countries. Mm -hmm. Believe me. And that does not mean that we should uh, be always looking forward to our these very reliable and trustworthy brothers for dole outs and handouts. No. No. That is not uh, my vision. Yeah. That is not how I see things. Yeah. My vision is that uh, through m um, and my nation is motivated. We are, Pakistan nation is a very resilient nation. Mm -hmm. And it's a very brave nation. And my vision is that together through this Mosada, uh, min Ikhwan, min Huna, we will inshallah stand on our own feet. Mm -hmm. and promote trade, mm -hmm. promote uh, investments. Mm -hmm. Because uh, no doubt we are brothers, but it doesn't uh, you know, reflect well. It doesn't augur well for Pakistan to always seek uh, help and aid from our But they are more than willing, as they, they did yesterday. True. I mean, it was a it was a glorious example yeah. of a brother helping another brother. But we want this help to be transformed into trade, mm -hmm. into investment, into more um, you, know, you know economic uh, well-being, generating wealth, and standing on our own feet. That is the way forward. That is the way, and that is the reason Pakistan was carved out of India. So we are and inshallah, this dream will be fulfilled. حضرت رئيس الوزراء بما أنك تتحدث عن الهند اليوم يعني من المعلوم أن العلاقة بين الطرفين بين هذين البلدين المتجاورين تاريخيا هي علاقة متوترة كيف يعني تصف العلاقة بينكم خصوصا وأنك من أقرب رؤساء الحكومات الذين مروا يعني بالسياسة الباكستانية إلى الهند أختي هذا نقطة مهمة جدا <تصفيق> India is a neighbor country. We are neighbors. And uh, let's be very blunt. Even if we are not, uh, we are, we are not neighbors by choice, mm -hmm. but we are there forever. And it is up to us to live peacefully and progress or quarrel with each other and waste time and resources. That's up to us. We have, Pakistan has learned its lesson. Mm -hmm. We had three wars with India, three. And the consequence of those wars, as a result, it only brought more miseries, to the unemployment, to nations. poverty, and millions were uh, demoted from their level of satisfaction to a low level mm -hmm. of satisfaction. We have learned our lesson and we want to live in peace with India mm -hmm. provided we are able to resolve our genuine problems. Yes. Now this is very important, Ukhti. So my message to the Indian leadership and Prime Minister Modi is that let's sit down on the table and have serious and sincere talks to resolve our burning issues like Kashmir where uh, uh, flagrant violation of human rights are taking place day in and day out. That's a very important message today. Absolutely. And Two, they usurped whatever semblance of autonomy was given to the Kashmiris in their constitution, Article 370. They revoked that in August 2019. Mm -hmm. And minorities over there are being grossly mishandled. I'm not going to go into detail. Suffice it to say that this must stop so that a message can go around the globe that India is ready to 
have talks and we are more than ready. So we you are ready for peace? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, One more thing, I just want to conclude this point. We must. We are not a country, we, we don't have Zayt, Agugas, we have uh, very st uh, strong human resource, labor, engineer, etc. That's our asset. We want to convert that into our uh, tools to provide prosperity. Mm -hmm. And for that, we need to use our resources to alleviate poverty, unemployment, provide medicine, high quality education, etc. And not waste these resources in On getting war. ammunition and bombs. Mm. That's the message I want to give to Modi. And lastly, we are both nuclear powers, armed to the teeth. God forbid, God forbid, God forbid, as a harp, you know, takes place, who will live to tell what happened. Mm. So this is not an option. I have requested yesterday my brother, uh, His Highness uh, President Mohammed bin Zahid, that he's a, he's, a, he's a brother of Pakistan and you is a brotherly country. He also has good uh, relations in India. He can play a very important role mm -hmm. to bring the two countries on the talking table. And I give my word of honor that we will be talking to Indians with sincerity of purpose. But it takes two to tango. Yes. Both hands must count. تاريخيا لحزب الرابطة الإسلامية القدرة في التعامل مع الشرق والغرب في آن واحد. وأيضا تاريخيا لأكستان القدرة على التعامل ولها دور براغماتي بالتعاون مع الشرق والغرب أيضا على نفس المستوى اليوم هل تعولون على هذا الدور التاريخي الذي حتى خلال الحرب الباردة يعني كان, كان دور بارز بإحداث توازن بالتعاطي مع القوتين العالميتين اليوم العالم منقسم بين هاتين القوتين هل تعولون على هذا الدور لإحداث توازن بالتعاطي مع هاتين القوتين I think uh, the survival of this world lies in coexistence. Mm -hmm. Tensions like what's happening in Eastern Europe has uh, devastated the entire world. Look at commodity prices, they are skyrocketing. Look at uh, uh, in the con country like Pakistan can hardly afford to import and buy expensive zayt, expensive uh, fertilizer or mm -hmm. wheat. It is simply beyond imagination. So, and, and look at uh, the amount of money which is being pumped into buying ammunition and everything and the world is devastated. Even today, had it not been for uh, a warm winter in Europe, their gas supplies probably would have exhausted. وبالتالي بين الصين والولايات المتحدة أين باكستان اليوم؟ Between China and US, we are a bridge. You are a bridge. في ظل المؤشرات الاقتصادية المقلقة في الداخل الباكستاني وفي ظل الضائقة المعيشية التي يعيشها المواطن الباكستاني وبظل اتساع الفجوة المالية مع ارتفاع أسعار النفط عالميا بما أن باكستان مستورد أساسي للنفط كيف وما هي رؤية شهباز شريف اليوم للحل الاقتصادي داخل باكستان؟ We have a difficult economic challenge, no, no question about it. But the Contemporary history is replete with such examples that nations faced challenges, difficulties, but then, you know, made a solemn commitment, accepted the challenge, stood up, worked hard, untiringly, sacrifices, and they overcame those problems. They are living examples. What happened uh, 70 um, years ago, 75 mm -hmm. years ago, when um, Germany was annihilated? And sure. raised to ground, Japan. What happened? You know, they were totally um, um, defeated. Mm -hmm. And in 60 years' time, they came back on the horizon like the world's most uh, going powers. So that is the example in front of us. We have challenges. We have dif difficulties. Our brothers in this country, in UAE, they are assisting us, and other um, brotherly countries are assisting us. Inshallah, we will overcome this difficulty. But in the end of the day. It is up to us. Through we have to work hard. We have to commit untiring efforts. It's about blood and sweat.
هل لديكم خطة اليوم لمكافحة الفساد داخل باكستان وهل ستقفون بوجه الفساد المستشري داخل باكستان I'm the last man who would ever tolerate uh, corruption mm -hmm. and this is why I'm a I'm a small fry, I'm a, a very central person, but in governance, there is no nonsense I accept. أغلب الحكومات الباكستانية لم تكمل مهام الدستورية كاملة ولم تكمل وقت الدستور كامل مع عدا الحكومات المؤقتة اليوم عبر هذه الرؤية المختلفة التي تعبر عنها هل تتأمل أن تكمل حكومة شهباز شريف مهمتها الدستورية ومدتها الدستورية؟ إن شاء الله شو. عندنا يعني المدة الحكومة الباكستان الآن تحت الآن تقريبا سبع تسعة أشهر تسعة تسعة أشهر تسعة سبعة يعني طيب إن شاء الله إذا الله أراد نحن نعمل يعني من قوة وإن شاء الله باكستان من أجل باكستان قوية إن شاء الله من أولى اسمح لي حضرة رئيس الوزراء أن أختم مع هذا السؤال الذي سأطلب منك لو سمحت أن تتوجه فيه للمواطن الباكستاني اليوم الذي يتابع شاشة وقناة العربية ماذا تقول للباكستانيين الذين يرزحون اليوم يعني تحت وطأة الفقر وبظل أزمة اقتصادية خانقة بما أن الأوضاع الاقتصادية متردية عالميا وطبعا في الداخل الباكستاني My message to you to my brothers and sisters in Pakistan would be that look how uh, UAE has uh, converted uh, uh, Rammel into gold and how Saudi Arabia is now one of the most going uh, uh, society and country under dynamic leaderships of uh, uh, my brother his uh, Royal Highness the Prime Minister Mohammed bin Salman mm -hmm. and his team and here in UAE my brother Mohammed bin Zayed and his team look their vision look their dynamic leadership so it's all about commitment and it's all about hard work. It's all about untiring efforts and sacrifices. Speeches do inspire and stanzas do inspire, but uh, they need to be converted into action. Mm -hmm. That's it. حضرة رئيس الوزراء شكرا لك على هذه المقابلة الخاصة وعلى وجودك معنا الليلة على العربية على شاشة العربية طبعا نتمنى السلام والازدهار لباكستان بالسنوات المقبلة وضمن ولايتك شكرا لك مشاهدينا إلى هنا نأتي إلى ختام هذه المقابلة الخاصة عبر قناة وشاشة العربية شكرا لحسن المتابعة وإلى اللقاء في مقابلات خاصة أخرى